Hello and welcome to my downstairs bookcases. These are, well, these are my red shelves. These are just adult titles that I have read and or have given up on. <laughs> and you're here today because you're gonna help me unhaul some books. Okay, now obviously you can't really help me because you're not here but you get to watch me go through this process. So I have a few criteria that I'm going to use to help me get rid of some of these books. The first is books that I have DNF'd and have no interest at this point in going back to ever again. The second is going to be books that I out and out hated and or extremely disliked. And the third criteria is that I don't remember even one single thing about the plot. So. First up, books that I DNF'd and have no interest in returning to. stack of books that I didn't finish but they've still been sitting on my shelves for whatever reason. Um, some of these, well, a couple of these are going to be a little controversial. First, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I do believe I talked about this when I did try to read it and um, I didn't finish it so don't really take my review. I just didn't like the way the characters, any of them, were presented and it definitely shouldn't have been classified as a thriller in my opinion. It was more trying to be horror, but never quite nailed that insidious aspect to me. Um, next is Peace and Turmoil by Elliot Brooks. Okay, this is a fellow booktuber, so I'm not going to say much about it. I didn't finish it. That's the end of it. Um, I have The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Oh, lordy. I tried to finish this. I really did because I loved um, Station Eleven. Uh, in the end, people um, convinced me not to bother if I wasn't getting on with it, which I was not. Next, I have How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mboy. Um, this is a recent DNF. I won this in a Goodreads giveaway, so I was really obviously excited about it. That's why I entered the giveaway. It's taking place in a fictional African village where an oil company has been drilling for oil near this town for years. And recently... They've become more and more lax with keeping up on the equipment and when, how, and where they can drill. And the villager, the children in the village are getting very ill and dying. Um, it was told in a very strange manner. It was like partly you had the consciousness of all the children as a point of view. Then you had Tula, who's supposedly the main character. You had her point of view, which I liked that. But then we had a point of view from her uncle. And I disliked this man intensely. The, the male gaze was so present, and the way he would look at and view and speak about women, I just despised. And because I was already not having a very easy time reading it, once I got to that section, I decided I had to stop. And then the final was Plain, by he Plain Bad Herons by Emily M. Danforth. I thought I was going to love this so much. My problem is that more of it takes place in present day surrounding the creation of this movie based on the historical story. And I didn't care about that. I wanted the historical story. So I just wasn't going to force my way through this many pages when I wasn't enjoying what I was reading. Okay, next we're going to do books that I just straight up did not like and do not want to keep. This one might take a little longer.
lot more. We'll just start. Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. I actually, this is probably one I DNF'd. I don't know if I finished this one. Maybe this should have gone in the other pile. Doesn't matter. I was extremely disappointed because I didn't think I had gotten what I was sold. Uh, the Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. I really, really didn't like this one. I'll see if I can link um, the various places I talk about these books at in the description box. So you can go check out my full thoughts. This was just... I'm not into Jane Austen, but I thought I could still enjoy it. But n no, if you are not like a lover of Jane Austen, you're not you're not gonna get on with this. Um, and then also like it was the only reason I knew what time period it was set in was because the dates were listed above the chapters. Otherwise, I never would have known. Then we have Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This is a thriller where once again, what I was sold is not what I got, and I was annoyed at the misleading marketing. Uh, and then we have The Bright and Breaking Sea, sea by Chloe O'Neill. This was terrible. Um, this is written in a very juvenile manner. If it weren't for the ages of the characters and some of the um, adult humor, I would have said that this was a middle grade novel and I think it would have fared much better as such. It just wasn't good. The humor fell flat and it was honestly, it was, the only reason it was laughable was because of how poorly the humor came off. Um, then I have The Haunting of Bryn Wilder. Wow, this book disappointed me. I was sold like gothic and like slightly supernatural and it was just not that. It was like a poor attempt at a love story with like weird religious undertones for no reason. Then we have The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This is another one that was supposed to be gothic and just really wasn't. Um, this is a case where I just think that the author is not good at writing this style of novel. I didn't find any of it to be believable, and I hated the main character. Oh, here's a controversial one. Uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I don't understand the love for this book, because I didn't find it funny. Like, I saw the jokes, I just didn't think they were funny. So I guess it's just like a humor mismatch thing. But yeah, I had to slog to get through this one. And I know it's so many people's favorite book, and I just don't get it. And then we have The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben. I know I didn't like this, but I can't remember all the reasons why. I just, I really just didn't like the way the characters were written, I think is what it boils down to. This also could have fallen under, I can't remember a single thing about the plot. Uh, then we have two by Samantha Downing. We have My Lovely Wife and He Started It. I hated He Started It. It was going well, but then it got to a point where the author didn't seem to know what exactly she wanted to do with the story, so she just made everything happen, and I thought that was dumb. And then My Lovely Wife, um, <laughs> I barely remember at this point what happened. All I know is that, again, the ending made me angry, so... Those are both going to go. And then the last two I have are, it's The Complete Belgariad by David Eddings. Um, I just don't need these anymore. I enjoy them well enough, I guess, but given the things that happened with David Eddings, and if you want to know, you can just Google it, um, I just don't like having them on my shelves at this point. Okay, and then the final section is going to be books that I genuinely just don't remember anything about the plot. This is kind of to get rid of those books that I've been hanging on to because I obviously didn't hate them. But I think it's just time for them to go now. Obviously they're not bringing me any joy. I won't be rereading them because I don't remember if I even liked them that much to begin with. This will probably be the most. I don't know. We'll see. Right, this is my biggest stack yet. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to tell you much about these books, 
The only thing I can say is that, for the most part, I didn't hate them. I did find one that should have been included in the last stack, but I totally missed it. Um, so we have Give Me Your Hand by Megan Abbott. It's a thriller. That's all I got. We have The Bookshop of Yesterdays by Amy Meyerson. And you're going to see a theme here. Most of the books that have bookstore or bookshop in the title are so forgettable. Like, I enjoy them in the moment, but I can't remember anything about them shortly after I've read them. We have Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore. Again, remember nothing. We have Young Jang Young by Gabrielle Zevin. The Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper. We have The Shadows by Alex North, which again is a thriller, but that's all I remember. And then Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. This is one of those where like, I know I enjoyed reading it, but like I, I really don't know what it was about. Which is kind of how all of these are, I guess. Next stack, we have The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. This was a recommendation from somebody years and years and years ago. And I feel like I liked it, but I don't know what it's about. <laughs> we have The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. Again, bookshops in the title. I, I think they're just all so similar that while I enjoy reading them, I, I, I don't know if I could tell them apart from each other. We have Everyone Brave is Forgiven. I know this is World War II historical fiction. I don't remember what it's about, though. And then we have Two by Jesse Burton, The Muse and the Miniaturist. And I think The Miniaturist, I vaguely recall it having like a magical element, but The Muse, I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Final stack, When the Lights Go Out by Mary Kubica. It's a thriller, that's all I remember. Um, that's what Frenemies Are For by Sophia Littlefield and Lauren Gershell. This was one of those that I was just looking for easy, like, chiclet type reads, and that's how I ended up with this, but I have no idea what it's about. We have Still Lives by Maria Hummel. I enjoyed this. I know that because I remember the cover, but I, I, I art maybe? Something to do with art? We have The Bookshop of the Broken Hearted by Robert Hillman. This I think I read like last year and I already don't know what it's about. We have Our Cry and Cruelty by Araminta Hall. I think this was a thriller. The Paris Hours by Alex George. I don't, I don't know. I think it's World War II historical fiction as well. No, it's not. Paris in 1927. Not even close. Then we have The Lost and Wanted by Nell Frudenberger. I'm guessing this is a thriller, but I, I don't remember. And then finally, and this is going to break some hearts, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. I tried so hard to enjoy this. I tried to read it in multiple different ways. I read it through about two times total, and I, I just don't understand. Like, I, I get that... There's a certain artistic style thing to it, and I understand why people would like it, but I just don't. <laughs> okay, my shelves are sufficiently weeded out, I guess. Um, that's really all this video is, is just me getting rid of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have read any of these books. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.